If you have scoliosis, what can it affect? Scoliosis is a sideways curvature of the spine, and it's a sideways curvature of the spine somewhere located either in the lumbar, thoracic, or cervical area. The sideways of the curvature needs to also have some rotation associated with it. So once the curve becomes greater than 10 degrees and there's associated rotation, and normally the rotation's into the concavity of the curve, that's when you have a diagnosis of scoliosis. Now the spine is specifically designed to have some normal natural curves in the spine, and these curvatures are from the side. So we know the spine should be completely straight from the front, but it should also have curves from the side. And these curves of the spine are designed to be, make the spine stronger, meaning deal with gravitational forces. It allows the spine to be very flexible, meaning it allows it to be strong but flexible, allowing you to move in your trunk, meaning it allows you to bend forward, bend back and allows you to rotate and laterally bend and because of these normal curvature of the spine it allows the spine to distribute forces evenly along these curves so therefore no one area accepts more stress than the other these normal curvatures allow the body to deal with all the things that we just mentioned the spine gives very specific structure to the body it allows us to stand upright allows us to give us good posture allows us to gain in very very flexible mo movement but most importantly the spine is designed to protect something and the spine is allowed to, to protect something called your spinal cord. Your spinal cord is what descends directly from your brain and where all the messages come from go down your spinal cord, out your something called your spinal nerves, in into your body. And your brain and your spinal cord is what composes of your central nerve system. Your central nerve system is by far the most important system of the body because it's what's controlling and coordinating every other system of your body. So your spine in a coordination with your skull are your number one protective mechanisms. Now your skull is not designed to move. It is, is solid bone and it's encased. So therefore your brain uh, doesn't have to deal with motion where your spinal cord has to deal with motion because your spine is moving. However, if something affects the structure of your skull, it eventually will affect the way your brain functions because what it's affecting, it affects what's in it. Or unfortunately, if something affects your spine, it can start affecting other things. That, that if, once it starts affecting the central nerve system, it can start affecting other things. So can scoliosis, if you have scoliosis, and it starts affecting the spine, it can start leading to other things. Now, the first way to know if your spine or you have scoliosis is that we tend to notice is postural changes. We tend to notice your shoulders to be unlevel, your, your, your ribs to be unlevel, your hips to be unlevel, uneven waist. We notice rib arches. We notice a deviation in normal alignment and posture. Typically, these posture changes can lead to other issues like balance and coordination and equilibrium tends to be the most common because if something is out of normal alignment relative to another, it makes things kind of, you can tend to have this balance, coordination, equilibrium problem, but not always, it's not consistent. But if we see posture asymmetry, you should definitely be concerned, is, the, is there a scoliosis occurring? Scoliosis can start affecting uh, things like pain, because once the spine shifts of alignment, like I said, and it starts affecting the central nerve system, it can lead to neurological pain, very obviously, radicular pain going down into the arms and legs. But since the spine also shifts out of alignment, it can start affecting different things. It, in children, it normally doesn't lead to lots of pain because what's causing the curves to progress is growth, and growth is non-compressive, so it doesn't hurt. However, scoliosis in the adult form is compressive to gravity, and Gravity is not kind to asymmetry, meaning an unsymmetrical spine. So as gravity is compressing down the spine, because when the function of the spine is to hold the body upright, it has to resist the forces of gravity. Well, as gravity compresses down on an asymmetrical spine like scoliosis, it can lead to pain. It can lead to stiffness and it can lead to back pain. And normally in adults, the number one symptom is not posture. Um, normally the number one symptom is pain. They see pain, they seek pain, they go and have x-rays taken, oh, and they're told that they have scoliosis that maybe they didn't know they have. So once we start experiencing pain and we know there's progression in the adult, the concern is will the pain worsen? Other effects of scoliosis can unfortunately be more severe, meaning if curves are left 
left to progress to become a severe stage and left untreated, they can start affecting functional issues within the body. One concern is always cardiovascular or respiratory function or your cardiovascular output is what we like to say. And this is directly related to your respiratory function. Now, as curves progress, the curves become bigger, they affect the space in which your lungs sit and the space where your lungs sit can become compressed or altered and that can start affecting the way your lungs can respirate or breathe. Now, it's definitely not related to actually size of curve. It's different for every single patient, but it's one concern if curves become bigger, they can start affecting the way your lungs can function. In addition, not only can it affect the space, but it can affect the neurological impact on the diaphragm, and it can also lead to spinal stiffness. And as the spine gets stiffer, lungs have a harder time opening because your spine can no longer move or flex when you breathe normally. In addition, since scoliosis is, can affect the lumbar spine of the low back, it can affect the nerve tissues going down into the small intestine, large intestines, and of course the stomach. And this can lead to digestive issues. Scoliosis patients have a higher incidence of digestive issues. And this is not uh, as common as it is with children as it is with, with adults. In addition, as the spine compresses, it decreases the space from the, in the torso. And this can lead to compression or a lack of normal suspension of the digestive organs which attach to your spine, which can lead to sluggish digestion or sluggish colon function and small intestine function. Also, when the spine shifts out of alignment, it can expect it affects the central nerve system like we mentioned, but it, it affects the way the cerebral spinal fluid flows throughout the spine into the brain. This effect of the cerebral spinal fluid and vascular supply to the, to the brain can now lead to headaches and migraine. Migraine. So unfortunately, when we look at scoliosis, especially left untreated, it can lead to a whole host of effects, not just back pain or posture issues. And this is purely a result of the une uneven forces or the uh, unsymmetry in the body being affected. It starts to affect different organs, different tissues, especially as patients age and they get into older, older categories with scoliosis, it tends to cause more and more problems. So here at Scoliosis Reduction Center, we definitely recommend being proactive towards your treatment. One thing we know, every severe curve was once small, so treating small curves are less likely to develop severe curves and we also know younger patients respond better than older patients so the younger person the younger you are the better response you can have even though with older patients we do get good results but I'll get total better improvements the younger and smaller the curve is so we always recommend being proactive as curves worsen, they cause more problems. As they cause more problems, they affect more functions. As they affect more functions, they affect your life more. So therefore, proactive treatment, treating curves small, being treating them as young as possible is definitely what we recommend in order to be better. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you'd like to hear about other topics and information on scoliosis, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish content. Thanks.